Hello, hello. Last week, I had a little video on how to use two form with a regular map to back a Phoenix form so that we can separate the web portion of our app from the core domains. But a lot of people asked about another strategy that is done with embedded form. So I wanted to show that today. So we have the same form here as I had last week. We have a title here, let's say Return of the King, and uh, we have some validation, right? So title and body can't be blank. And if you actually enter something here, uh, it's amazing, right? We can go ahead and create something. So I'll go back to the form. So this works uh, just as it did before, but I've changed the implementation. Let's take a look at it. Here's a compose live. We have a simple form. Uh, we take in this form assign and we have a title and a body. In the mount, we're using this compose form. So notice this is not our post that we would be creating. This is not a post schema. And we're getting a chain set. We're using the two form to generate that Phoenix HTML form. So let's go ahead and take a look at that compose form and see what that is doing for us. And if you see from the top, we are defining an embedded schema. Again, it has the title and body. So this is mapping exactly to our fields in our form. And we have uh, the chain set function right here that we're using right here. So that's the original render. What happens when we save? When we save, we're gonna hit this validate params first. And what this validate params function is doing is grabbing those raw params. It pa passes them through the chain set. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna cast the title in the body, right? Normal Ecto stuff. And then we're gonna validate that. So once again, it's pretty normal stuff. We're gonna validate that the title and the body are required. That's all the validation we're gonna do. Again, you can do more complex things here. And then we're gonna apply the action so that the errors actually get triggered. So we're gonna do all of that. And then in the case that we return a valid form, we're then gonna transform that valid forms. So that valid form is gonna be an embedded schema. And we wanna transform that into some attributes that we can then pass into our core domain. So in this case, we're just gonna do a map from struct, something simple, but you can imagine doing something more complex, maybe do some renaming, maybe do some other type of casting, whatever you need to do. And if it's just an error, we're gonna return a chain set. So we just pass this through. So once we have those validated params, this is the, the cool thing, we've created a seam, right? So now we have the validated params, but we validated them at the web layer. This is something we wanted to do. We wanted to keep some of the, um, kind of like an anti-corruption layer, preventing raw bad data from coming into our core domain. And so now we can pass the validated params into our create post function, which is our core domain. I think it's a pretty neat strategy if you wanna create that barrier and it has a little bit more boilerplate, but it's something you might be able to use if you feel like the situation requires it. Hope you like it.